Okay, well, today was the press conference for Chuck Fletcher at 12.15, and uh, some interesting things um, were said. So basically, uh, a, a lot of different things. Um, basically, the press conference starts with a bunch of injuries, so Ellis is making progress um, had did some things with rehab and is going to get evaluated in about a week or so. Still week to week. Um, Allison could play this weekend for the Phantoms. That's good news. Um, Hayes is hopeful for tomorrow against the Rangers, but uh, probably unlikely. Um, Broussard is still out, but he's close. Thompson had surgery. Um, he is out for a while. Um, Patrick Brown is also close. York is injured. Might play this weekend. Um for the Phantoms, Wisdom cannot play in the AHL. That would be Kingston down in the OHL, and he might be able to play for Canada uh, in the World Junior. So we'll see what happens there. But um, he could be back on track to maybe crack that roster, even though not playing. But I, and I, I, I really don't know if that'll happen. Um, so obviously that's a big thing with the injuries because that's been a, a main thing from this team. I'm going to talk about uh, the lines from practice now. Because th these were uh, very, very weird to me. Um, Farabee, Couturier, JVR, Drew, Broussard, Atkinson. Those are fine. I like those. Um, then you have Lawton with Hayes and Konechny. That's perfect, too. They had that going in the 1920 season. Bonneman, Frost, McEwen. Your extras are Limblom and Willman. Your defensive pairs. Ready? Get this. Provorov and Sealer. Sanheim, Ristolainen, Yandel, and Braun. Okay. Um... Two major issues with this. Morgan Frost should not be playing fourth line center. You've already done it with Limblom. He's already an extra today, right? Limblom is an extra, has played on the fourth line, did it last year, has done it this season. Frost is on the fourth line. If Morgan Frost is here to play on the fourth line, send him back down to Lehigh Valley. There is absolutely no point of Morgan Frost being up here to play fourth line minutes. He can't showcase anything. He can't do anything. The only thing he's going to get is power play time, and the power play is an entire mess. So who knows what will happen with that. And I'm going to get into the power play in a minute because some of the comments Fletcher made on that were very, very surprising to me. Um, but Provorov and Sealer, are you kidding me? I mean, look, I get it. Um, you want to keep Sanha and Russo together. You want to keep Yano and Braun together. But Nick Sealer should not play top pair minutes. I'm sorry. It, it's look. It's nothing against Sealer. It's nothing against what he's done, his play, anything. He just cannot play top pair minutes. It, it's nothing against him personally. Like it, it is a legit issue if you are putting Nick Sealer on the right side of Ivan Provorov. I mean, and and, and being honest, sometimes Seal, like Sealer is just so one dimensional. It's like it, it's not helping Provorov at all. Okay. Um... Then they break up the line of Farabee with Frost and Atkinson, where Farabee had three goals in his last three games. Uh, that line was combined for five points with two assists and the three goals from Farabee. And uh, shots on goal combined all three players in the last three games. The, the, that line had four shots on goal versus Florida, seven versus Carolina, and six versus New Jersey. Why would you break it up? Why? You've already been pretty reluctant this year of going back to things that have worked. This is the first time in a while we've seen Lawton with Hayes and Konechny. Farabee with Katuri and JVR has not worked this season, even though it worked in, in last year up for really majority of the season. So why can't you put Limblom with Katuri and Konechny? Why can't we see Giroux with Frost and Atkinson? Why can't we see some of these lines? I don't mind some of these, but it's like he's like reluctant to go to different things that were really were clicking, and when they're not clicking, he's not switching them. So, to me, that's a problem. Um, and then some of the other things. The power play is not a personnel issue. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know where that's coming from. It, it seems like he's very, you know, just defending the coaching staff, defending those guys. Um, he seems like he's willing to add another weapon on the power play. That's how I took it. Um which I wouldn't mind because I think that is something that they need, but it is not a personnel issue. He talked about the zone entries. The, the zone entries are an issue because the system sucks, and then you can't win the faceoff. Uh, when you're spending half of it doing the slingshot, that's probably why your your zone entries are terrible. Um, and then the first 10 games, 
those games to me are essentially irrelevant at this point. The Flyers are eight, eight, and four. You have twenty games played. They were six, two, and two in their first ten. They're now two, six, and two in their last ten. I legitimately couldn't care less about the first ten games of the season. It was an easier schedule, it was an easier workload. You weren't injured as much. I understand it. You know, you you keep talking about the injuries and everything and and this and that, but it's like so like defendant of the coaches it's just like it's so aggravating when you have to sit here and you listen to this when you it's just the same things every night so I don't know what's going to happen but a lot of this it, it, it all of this is a problem you you can't keep, keep being so defendant of these coaches when the results are not there if the Flyers were at least winning games or losing games when they were getting really close or, you know, having 40-something, 50 shots a night and they were losing 2-1, that's a different story. But they've been majorly outplayed um, in a lot of the of a lot of the last games. Um, zone time, they haven't had the puck in off. Every chance they have offensively is one and done. Their power play is a mess, like I've mentioned. There's so many things wrong right now with this team. And sitting here defending the coaches is not something we really should be doing, but I digress. So, let me know your guys' thoughts below uh, on Fletcher's press conference. Um, we'll see what happens tomorrow against the Rangers. Let me know your guys' thoughts below. Podcast articles, those links are on my channel. Hope you guys enjoy this one. I'll see you guys in the next one, and goodbye.